Emergency meeting! Emergency meeting! What the heck? We just started! Yeah, but when everyone went off to do their tasks, Orange just stood back at spawn doing nothing. See? He's not even denying it! Maybe he's just AFK. I'm telling you! Orange cannot be trusted! Yeah, gonna have to go with a no on that one, Chief. Wait, you guys! I'm telling you the truth! Orange's been silent the whole time! He's totally so going on the wrong guy! I... guess I'll stay back here and keep an eye on this guy? <laughs> ha! Works every time. Hello Internet! Welcome to Game Theory, the show that's been super sus since episode 1. Today we turn our attention back to Among Us, the game that taught the world that imposter is spelled with an O-R and not an E-R. Trust me, I had to confirm that spelling for our new Among Us inspired theory wear available right now. Shameless promotion alert. We have two great options for all you imposters out there. You can wear your sus pride proudly or you can go the other route and just try to blend in with your crewmates. That new Among Us theory wear both t-shirt and hoodie are linked right below this video for a limited amount of time, so grab them before they vent away. Anyway, it's a game all about lies, deception, and astronauts capable of performing an incredibly wide variety of tasks despite the fact that they don't seem to have arms. Yeah, if there's one thing that's really sus here, it's the anatomy of these crew members. At least the jelly beans over in Fall Guys had useless little nubbly arms for them to grab onto stuff. <laughs> Wait, no, what? That's their anatomy? What is this world I'm living in? Revelations about freakish video game skeletal structures aside, two weeks ago we started our examination of the strategy of Among Us, the overarching broad pieces of advice to think about as you dive into any round. Consider that episode Among Us 101 to 201. It's important to master the fundamentals. You have to learn to walk before you can shoot your tongue through their eyeballs, killing them brutally. But this week, we're getting into graduate level. Level Among Us strategy. Level 2000 IQ tactics that'll give you the extra edge you need to come out on top more often. Some you may be familiar with, most probably not. But when combined, all of these will take you from an experienced player to an elite one. So no time to mess around, let's get started. First, I'd like to start with a common rule of thumb that a lot of players seem to have adopted. The idea that when you start a meeting with seven players left alive, you should probably skip voting. It's something that you've probably heard if you watch a lot of streams of this game. We don't vote on seven, right? That's the rule. And if you ever forget that don't vote on seven rule, Valkyrie will be sure to remind you. Do not vote on seven. Oh, Do not vote on seven. Why it. are we voting on seven? While it's a rule that streamers and players will often repeat, and it's often a good piece of advice to follow, it's something that might leave some people asking why. The answer actually comes down to some pretty basic math. The overall reason for not voting when you get to seven players is this. If you vote to throw someone out of the airlock at seven players, then you're down to six players. Obvious math is obvious. Here's the most important part. In a two imposter game, starting a round with six players puts the imposters at a huge, huge advantage. In fact, there's a tactic that they can use that almost guarantees a win in that situation. All they have to do is sabotage reactor or O2, which forces the crew members to come repair it or risk an automatic game over. Then the two imposters just camp there and kill the first two crew members who come and repair it. That just leaves two imposters plus two remaining crew members equaling an imposter win. It's incredibly difficult for the crew members to avoid this sort of double kill trap even when they know it's coming. Thus, if there are two imposters remaining, do not set the imposters up for an easy win by letting them start around with two imposters and only six players. Or, as so many streamers have put it so eloquently so many times, we can't vote yeah. seven. Good advice there, Ninja. Wait a minute. You were the imposter that round. That's dishonest and twisted and a really good illustration of the next piece of advice today, which is that you shouldn't always blindly trust conventional wisdom. It's true of life in general, and it is especially true in a game like this. The rule of don't vote on seven makes mathematical sense, but keep in mind that an imposter could always use that rule to try and delay a vote if people are onto their scent, as Ninja does in that clip. If you're playing with a group of people who all play a certain way or expect you to play a certain way, it can often be strategic to buck conventional wisdom. For instance, killing and immediately self-reporting is generally considered to be a noob tactic. It's usually something done by impatient players after making risky kills that they shouldn't have gone for in the first place. Self-reporting is often seen as an obvious ploy that's easy to see through. Most intermediate and advanced players know that a smart player would never kill and self-report, which means that once you start reaching 
the advanced levels, it can sometimes be smart of you to self-report if you're prepared to start a team meeting with a lie that immediately deflects suspicion off of you. Again, most of this depends on what level of gameplay you're dealing with. Ninja's little bit of deception worked there because he was playing with a group of experienced players who understand the quote-unquote proper way to play the game, and he was able to twist that knowledge and use it against him to survive that round. If you're playing as an imposter with a bunch of smart and experienced players, sometimes the real big-brained play is to be unexpected by doing the thing that no smart or experienced player would ever think to do. It's reverse psychology. Noob tactics win because everyone is overthinking the game. And those are the kinds of galaxy brain strats that tend to work best when you're in a playgroup of people that you know. But there are also plenty of things to be aware of that'll help you out even if you're playing with randoms. And most of them boil down to properly understanding the game's mechanics in and out. First off, when you're a crew member, pay attention to the task completion meter at the top of your screen. You probably know by now that the imposters have the ability to perform fake tasks to blend in with the crew. What you might not realize is that while completing a real task will cause the team's meter to fill up, the fake tasks won't. So if someone walks up to perform a task, stands there for a while, and then walks away without the group's task meter going up, well, that means that they're a big phony who's trying to pull one over on you. And you should consider calling an emergency meeting to let everyone know about it. You were just making it look like you were playing. You're a phony! Hey! This guy's a great big phony! This is also something to be wary of as an imposter. When playing with experienced players who know about this tactic, avoid faking tasks. Or when you do fake a task, try to time it so you walk away right after the task meter goes up due to someone somewhere else on the station completing a different task. And obviously, that wait until the progress bar goes up before walking away so you can pretend it was you only is gonna work if you're performing a long task. If you sit in front of a simple task like wires for 20 seconds, waiting for the right moment to fake complete it, you're gonna have some explaining to do at the next team meeting. This is one of the areas where the game most rewards you for having specific knowledge and experience. So be aware of which tasks are long and which are short, and which ones have a visual indicator and which ones don't. So we've just covered one big reason to avoid trying to fake tasks as an imposter. Another reason not to fake tasks is that it's a waste of time, time that you can use much more productively. While your tasks are fake, your ability to make use of the security cameras and admin panel are very much real. Of the two, admin is by far the most useful. It's great for giving you a quick bird's eye view of who is in what section of the map, which can allow you to quickly identify who's traveling in a large group and who might be all off on their lonesome waiting to get a knife right between the shoulder blades. It can be useful for identifying where your teammate is so you can team up with them for a double kill. And maybe most importantly, it lets you know which areas of the station might have no people, which can be helpful if you're trying to come up with a fake alibi. Coming up with a fake alibi, like saying I was in laboratory, when in fact you were nowhere near laboratory, is usually pretty risky, because anyone who is in that area will be able to call your bluff. But if you use admin to confirm that a certain area of the station is empty, you can then claim to have been there without having to worry that someone else is gonna contradict your story. Of course, in a game that's all about deception, the most valuable skill a crew member could have is the ability to spot a liar. And honestly, this is one of the things that humans are just really bad at. In fact, a 2006 study by psychology researchers at UC Santa Barbara found that when asked to judge lies or truths, the test subjects guessed correctly 54% of the time. Only slightly better than the 50% success rate you'd expect if they were guessing completely completely at random. You might think, no, that's not me. I'm really good at spotting someone when they're lying, but that just might be you engaging in self-deception. Because research in another study by psychologists at the University of Missouri and Columbia have shown that people who think they're good at spotting liars are, on average, no better than the rest of us. That applies even for people whose entire job revolves around trying to catch people who are lying, like judges, police officers, and customs agents. Which is a good reason for court decisions to be based on hard evidence rather than the court's intuitions about who seems to fidget too much when they talk. You might be wondering, what advice could I have to help you spot a liar when I just argued that it's scientifically impossible to identify liars just by listening to them? Well, the answer here is simple. You don't just listen to them. As the saying goes, actions speak louder than words. And in Among Us, no action is more important than the almighty vote. At the end of each meeting, everyone's votes are made public. And if someone's statements seem to contradict 
their voting record, maybe their statements are lies. Of course, this is something that you have to be aware of as an imposter. It means that sometimes you're gonna have to vote to throw your partner under the bus, or out of the airlock, I suppose. Hey, let's face it, your job as an imposter is to be a literal backstabber, and sometimes the innocent crew members aren't the only ones that you have to betray in order to ensure your own survival. If everyone is onto your partner and you're the only one who doesn't vote for them, that's gonna look pretty sus. But that's all pretty common knowledge by this point, so here's the next level play that you can take from the crew member's side. Look out for bandwagon jumpers. That person who's always waiting to the last minute to vote, they might very well be an imposter who wants to see the way that the wind's blowing before casting their own vote. Imposters will often join the mob when it's obvious that their teammate's been caught by the group, but they'll seldom be the first one to vote to throw their partner into the lava pit. The earlier someone casts their vote to get rid of the imposter, the more likely it is that they're an innocent crew member, and the longer that they wait to vote, the more suspicious they seem to look. It's common knowledge at this point that everyone's votes are public, but people often simply focus on who other players vote for without considering the important part of when they choose to vote. Paying attention to that will often give you a far better indication of their guilt than just trying to guess based on who sounds suspicious. Of course, as we all know, the best part of the game is being an imposter, and the best part of being an imposter is the killing, where a lot of the strategy comes down to when, where, and who to kill. The biggest thing that you always want to aim for as an imposter is to kill in places and at times that are hard to catch. That much is obvious, right? And so are all the other tips that follow from that. Like the fact that you shouldn't kill anytime you see the cameras flashing red, because that means that there's someone watching the security feed who will be able to catch you red-handed. Of course, that's basic stuff, right? I'm sure you already knew that you shouldn't ever kill someone while the cameras are blinking red, and you've never, ever, ever lost a game by making that simple rookie mistake, right? Of course, if you're playing in a game where everyone is properly aware of how the cameras work, you can use the blinking red indicator to your advantage. Let's say you're a crew member, and on cameras you spot someone who looks like they're about to kill someone. Obviously, they'd never do it while you're watching. They're probably waiting until the red light goes out to do the deed. That means that you can sometimes bait people by getting off the cameras for just a second so that the red blinker goes off and then immediately hopping back on, possibly in time to actually witness the kill, or at the very least see a dead body with knowledge of the obvious culprits. And conversely, if you're the imposter, don't get baited by someone trying to do this to you. If you're about to make a kill and the cameras start blinking, it's probably time to move on and find a new target rather than just sitting there waiting for the person in security to stop watching cameras. So that's the win of the kill. As for the where, well, avoiding being seen doesn't just mean staying off the security feed. It also means that you should avoid killing in high traffic areas of the map. For instance, when playing on Scaled, it's extra risky to try and kill in the cafeteria or storage, which are the two rooms on the map that have three entrances. Even if someone isn't there to witness you doing the deed, it's highly likely that someone will pass through the area to find the body sooner, which means less time for you to separate yourself from the body and give yourself a potential alibi, and less time for your teammate or you to get a second kill in before the next team meeting is called. Other high traffic areas where you generally want to avoid killing also include obvious places like hallways, especially the Y connector on Mira HQ. Also be aware of rooms that have multiple entrances. Those rooms often get used as thoroughfares that people pass through on their way to other parts of the station. If you're playing on Paulus, killing in a place like specimen room, laboratory, or admin is almost no different than killing someone in a hallway. Avoid it if at all possible. And of course, there's the final question of who to kill. This is honestly something that I think a lot of players overemphasize. Oftentimes, the best kill is just the one that you can get away with, regardless of who it is. And if it becomes clear that you're stalking a specific player, that can often be a dead giveaway. That being said, when prioritizing who to kill, it's often best to avoid people who the group views as suspicious. Partly, this is because sometimes the crew will do the job for you by voting to throw their teammate into the lava pit, but mostly it's because as long as that suspicious crew member's alive, it deflects suspicion off of you and your partner. If that player gets voted out of the airlock, great, but if they split the vote in a way that results in no one getting voted out, that's fine for you too. That just means more time for you to spend killing. Obviously, then it follows from this that if you're avoiding killing players who are suspicious, you should try to be targeting players who are cleared and known to be innocent. If someone was seen doing a visual task early in the round, they're never going to be killed by getting thrown out of the airlock, so that leaves the task of killing them to you.
Remember, confirmed innocents are one of the few sources of reliable information that the crew has. The fewer confirmed innocents there are, the less crew members will be able to trust each other in the team meetings. Your job isn't just to rack up a body count, your job is to sow uncertainty and doubt. So when the crew has certainty about someone's innocence, consider making that person your primary target. Of course, Among Us isn't a game whose strategy can be reduced to a simple flowchart, which is the inherent limitation of any strategy guide or advice video like this one. Winning in Among Us requires you to adjust on the fly based on who you're playing with, which means that maybe the best advice of all comes from my dear friend Bear Grylls. Improvise, adapt, overcome. And most importantly of all, remember, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet because we're gonna make you smarter in all your favorite games and also just out in real life too. And maybe that's the most important game of all. Oh yeah, and also, it's a theory! A game theory! Thanks for watching! And one last reminder that both the sus and and crewmate hoodie and t-shirt are available right now below this video for a limited amount of time. All the smartest imposters know that looks are everything, so be the sharpest looking imposter and maybe, just maybe, you won't get thrown out of the airlock. Not saying it's a winning strategy, but it's worth a shot. I'll see you all next week.